hi everyone welcome to my channel my name is Nelly so today's video is a lecture style video so I chose this approach as opposed to my regular style of videos because I know how important this information is and so I wanted to present it in a way that it's easy to understand and straightforward so I have one request for you and the request is pretty easy, it's pretty straightforward. So as you can see from this first slide, you can see study in Japan for free. So today's video is about a scholarship. It's about a program that you don't have to spend money to come through, or it's a program that will not require you to spend money to be able to get a degree in Japan. So please help me share this information, share it to as many people as you can, share it to your family members, share it to your friends, share it to your neighbors, share it to your enemies, share it with each and every person you know is interested in furthering their studies. Even to someone that you think is not interested in furthering their studies because you never can tell, this information might just motivate them to want to get an advanced degree. So please, please, please share this information as much as you can. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's get straight right into the video. So the first slide just talks about studying in Japan for free. So the focus of today's video is the Japanese government scholarship or simply put the next scholarship. So I'm sure you're wondering like what is the Japanese government scholarship or what is the next scholarship? So the next scholarship is a prestigious scholarship. It's offered by the Japanese Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology. It has been in existence since 1954. You can imagine that's a long, long time. So that means this scholarship is not going to leave you halfway or you're not going to come to Japan and then you're told that, oh, we cannot sponsor you again because there are no funds. No, I mean, it's been in existence. It's been in existence for this long, so you can trust it. And then the essence or the purpose of this scholarship is just to provide assistance to students interested in studying at Japanese universities. So for this scholarship, you don't need to pay any application fee. Can you imagine how cool that is? You don't need to pay any money to apply for this scholarship. And also no language requirements whatsoever. No IELTS, no TOEFL, no TOEIC, nothing of that sort. You just apply without this language requirement. And to tell you how sure or how certain or how credible this scholarship is, it has given over 102 students from 160 countries the opportunity to study in Japan. So this information is from 2015 and I'm sure by now, there will be more students that have benefited from this scholarship. So, I mean, what are you waiting for? You can be among the number of people who have studied in Japan through this scholarship by just listening through with this information and then going on with the application process. And also, as you listen, don't forget to share it with that friend of yours who you know is interested in also studying abroad or who you know graduated but doesn't have anything to do and wants to further their studies. So let's move on. So now I have all the categories listed out for you here. So there are seven categories in total. The first one is the undergraduate category. So this is for those who want to study for an undergraduate degree in Japan. That is for a bachelor's degree in Japan. Next, we have the research student category. So this is for those who want to do a master's degree or a PhD in Japan. So they will apply through this category. And then the teacher training category is for those who have had five years of teaching. Ex excuse me. It's for those who have had five years of teaching experience and then they just want to brush their skills in teaching. So they can come here and do that. And then the Japanese studies, as the name implies, for those who want to study Japanese. College of Technology, for those who want to come to the College of Technology in Japan. Professional Training, those who want to get professional training in Japan. And the Young Leaders Program. So it's mainly for those graduates who have had work experience. And the aim is just to help build leaders so as you can see young leaders so that's the purpose of the program 
So let's move on. So now let's talk about the benefits of this scholarship if you come as an undergraduate student. So the very first one is no admission fee required. So generally the admission fee or the acceptance fee is paid after you get your letter of acceptance or your admission letter. So you're expected to pay this amount if you go to a public university in Japan. But as a mixed undergraduate scholar, you don't have to worry about this. As a matter of fact, most MEX recipients don't even know how much they had to pay or how much the admission fee in Japan cost because they did not have to pay anything. So they had no reason knowing. But anyway, generally, this is how much you are supposed to pay if you come without a scholarship but then max is going to take care of this for you and you don't have to worry about this so then the next thing is also no tuition fee so generally if you're in a public university you have to pay this much per year for your tuition but as a max scholar equally max will take care of this for you and you don't have anything to worry about The next one is if you're taking entrance examination, you will not have to pay anything because MEX will equally take care of that for you. And then the sweetest part is you get a monthly allowance of 117,000 yen monthly. Can you imagine? Then even better is that your airfare from your country to Japan is fully covered. I mean, from your country's airports to Japanese airports is going to be covered for you. And then when you graduate, it doesn't end there. When you're going back to your country, they equally take care of the airfare from Japan to your country. So can you imagine you come to Japan, you don't have to pay anything while going to school, no tuition, no admission fee, no entrance examination fee. And then you still get taken care of on a monthly basis. And when you're going, they take care of you too by paying your flight to go home. So really, you don't have to worry about money issues when you come through this MEX scholarship. And that's why I'm very passionate about it. Because I know that it's an opportunity for anyone who is interested in studying abroad to come study and not have to worry about how they will take care of themselves or how they are going to pay the tuition and all the other expenses that comes while you are a student. So that's why I talk so much about, about this. And that's why I ask you to share it with many people so that many people can get this information and many people can benefit from this scholarship as well. So let's talk about the eligibility requirements as an undergraduate who is coming to study through this scholarship. So the very first one is you have to be from a country that has diplomatic relations with Japan. So as I showed you in the previous slide, students from over 160 countries had come to Japan to study through this scholarship. So it means the probability or the possibility of your country being among this 160 countries is very high. So what I'll recommend is that you check with the Japanese embassy in your country and see if they have any ties with your country. And if they do, then you should start applying as soon as possible. The next one is that you must be born on or after April 2nd, 1997. So, so also that means if you were born on the 1st of April, 1997, unfortunately you don't qualify, but if you were born on the 3rd of April, 1997, you qualify. If you were born on the 25th of December, 1997, you still qualify. If you were born on the 1st of April, 1998, you still qualify. So you have to be born on this date or any time after this date to qualify. The next one is that you have to have had 12 years of schooling. What that really means is that you have to have graduated from high school with a high school diploma. Then you must be willing to learn Japanese. I mean, you don't have to know Japanese before you apply for this scholarship, but then you have to be willing to study Japanese when you come to Japan. 
because that's very important. I mean, you can survive in Japan to a large extent by just doing hand gestures and just using Google Translate. But it will equally be great if you know a word or two in Japanese while living in Japan. So with this scholarship, you will be provided Japanese, um, basic Japanese language classes that will help you to be able to go through your daily life and just do things by yourself. But let me repeat again, you do not need to know Japanese before coming to Japan to study through this scholarship. But you have to be willing to learn Japanese while being a recipient of this scholarship and then you have to submit a health certificate and then you have to arrive in japan between april 1st 2022 and april 7th 2022 so now let's move on so i'm sure you must have heard everything and then you're just wondering like what programs are available so that i can come and study through this scholarship so the very first program is that you can come and study law, a bachelor's degree in law. You can equally come and study politics. You can come and study pedagogy, sociology, literature, history, Japanese language. You can study for a bachelor's degree in all of this. So the category is called Social Sciences and Humanities A. So... So there's also a B category. So this is for those who want to study for a bachelor's degree in economics or for those who want to study for a bachelor's degree in business administration. So now let's move to the natural sciences. So just like we had social science and humanities A and B, it's the same thing also with the natural science. It's categorized. So in the A category, you have mathematics, you have physics, you have chemistry. So if you want to study for a bachelor's degree in mathematics, physics, or chemistry, then you apply through the A category. Actually, I think it's just worth mentioning that I have a bachelor's degree in chemistry. <laughs> it has nothing to do with this anyway. So, and then the next one is if you want to study electric and electronic studies. For example, if you want to study for a bachelor's degree in electronics, you want to study for a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering, you want to study for a bachelor's degree in information engineering, then you can also apply. And this is through the A category. And then you also have civil engineering and architecture. That's for those interested in civil engineering, architecture, or environmental engineering. So this is all in the natural sciences A category. And then still in the natural sciences, A, you have the chemical studies. That's for those who want to study applied chemistry, chemical engineering, industrial chemistry, or textile engineering. And then you have metallurgical engineering, you have mining engineering, you have maritime engineering, and you have biotechnology. So all the science courses I've read so far, they fall under the natural sciences A category. So now let's move to the B category. So this is for those who want to study agricultural studies. For example, a bachelor's degree in agriculture or in agricultural chemistry, agricultural engineering, animal science, veterinary medicine, forestry, food science or fishery. So this is under natural sciences b and then moving then the next one is you have to provide your academic transcripts then you have to provide a certificate of graduation so if you graduated from high school then you have to have your graduation certificate and then you have to provide a recommendation letter from one of your high school teachers then you have to provide a medical certificate and then a certificate of enrollment if you've already enrolled in the university. But if you've not enrolled in the university, then there's no need providing a certificate of enrollment. And then the last one is a certificate of language proficiency. I put here if available. So if you have a certificate showing that you're proficient in maybe in English language, for example, if you have IELTS here certificate, then you can provide it. If you have the Japanese language certificate showing that you're your proficient in Japanese language, then you can provide that as well. 
so next which is the last so this is what the application form looks like it's pretty straightforward but if you have any questions while filling it out you can always reach out to me and i will help answer whatever question you have a slide so if you have any questions for me if you have any difficulties while filling the form if you have any confusion any doubt then don't hesitate to leave me an email my email is nellyslive03 at gmail.com and you can also drop me a line on Instagram. My Instagram is Nellis underscore life. So thank you for staying tuned with me today. And I would like to repeat again, please share this video as much as you can. Let people know about this scholarship. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward to apply. You don't need to spend any money. And so there's no need hiding this kind of information. So please share this as much as you can. Share it with, any, with each and every person that you know just share it so i'll be talking about the other categories of the mech scholarship in subsequent videos so i would like to request that if you've not already subscribed please hit the subscribe button and you hit the bell button so that you get notified when these videos drop so thank you so much for staying tuned with me thank you so much for going through this presentation with me and have a blessed week see you in the next video goodbye